But the funny thing is, talking in front of a camera is actually scary. That's also why you gain so much traction. It's not because you have an agenda with this channel. I was very afraid of the judgment of people. I think I went with what was comfortable, all right? What I knew. It's okay to start with an idea and pivot halfway through then. I think it needs to pivot. Oh, you don't like being recorded on camera? That awkward feeling when you switch on the camera, you press the record button and you feel awkward and not know what to say and how to talk. Maybe you don't like your accent or the way you look or you forget the things that you needed to say. And because of all of this, you don't record the videos that you actually want to do for others. So what is the secret of being confident in front of a camera? Is it something that you're just born with? Is it something that only extroverted people have? Which means that you're doomed if you're not one one of those. This is exactly the question that I've asked to my wife after she produced more than 300 videos on our first YouTube channel. And even if she is bubbly and friendly and upbeat as a person, she struggled on being confident on camera, but she's gonna share a mental switch that happened at a specific moment after publishing videos that she felt very awkward about that changed everything. But let's hear it from her. Finally, a video where I'm not alone rambling at this camera. I'm hoping you are watching. Today, I wanted to invite my wife here, which is going to be part of this channel. And because we've built a YouTube channel in the past since 2016, that's called Lazy Dancer Tips. And the host of the show, it's my wife. I wanted to bring her in with me to talk about a few things that I want to ask you because I want to help people that haven't had your experience yet. They might want to hear what you have to say about things that now we take for granted, but at the beginning were very tough. This is Alessia <laughs> and we are happily married. I'm not smiling just because I need to. <laughs> Here's how it's going to work. I'm gonna ask you some questions about what I know you've been either struggling or improved upon and your zone of genius, let's say. Can I say something? It's really weird that, you know, this time it's your channel we're on and it's not mine. It's like we are <laughs> like I'm entering a world of the unknown because it's always been very interesting when having my channel and you're in the background and now it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You are the face and shut up in front of the camera being all uh, super bubbly and confident and seeing you here that you're, you're wanting to help others, trying to do what we've actually done and build a online business and give them tips and all the little insights and the struggles and the happy places that we've been to. So it's nice, it's beautiful to have you finally in front of the camera and finally uh, having a place to shine. Look, I even set up a whole lounge for us to <laughs> chat about what we've done in the past. I think it's so incredible. I feel like I want to ask you a few things. And also, no, I need to say this first because sure. I do feel that without you, nothing like this would have ever happened. So I am Love. the most grateful person in this world to you for pushing me to do something that it was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. Likewise, without you, none of this would have happened either. So I thought. High five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough with the self-celebration here. But thank you, my darling. You're so nice and kind. And now we are publicly sharing the stage. Yay! That's incredible. About, you mentioned being bubbly on camera and all of that, and it's actually related to my first question for you. Because mm. I know you, you are naturally bubbly and friendly, but have you always been this bubbly and confident and easygoing in camera as well? Or did you struggle? I like that question. I like that very much because people think that you are, you, you know, you must be a natural. You must be a natural in person and having people skills and the fact that you've got people skills, it's automatically translated in what you do on camera. But the funny thing is, talking in front of a camera is actually 
scary, especially when you don't know who's going to be on the other side. To answer quickly to your question, no, I haven't been so confident and bubbly in front of the camera since the beginning. I was very afraid of the judgment of people and the industry of ballet and what other st uh, students and teachers and big people in the ballet world would think because I've always been in a way judged and as a dancer you judge yourself every single day Day, whenever you get into the studio in front of the mirror it becomes part of you so the first reaction that you have even if you're if you're not so self-aware is what are people think what are they going to think about me what are the people going to say about me is it going to be something good or is it going to be bad it's definitely going to be something bad For sure, right right so <laughs> <laughs> you never think about the positive outcome that you can have with your knowledge and sharing the experience of how much it can actually help people. So no, I haven't been so bubbly and happy and confident in front of the camera since the beginning. I keep repeating this because it's very important for people to know. It took me quite a while to understand how not to mumble, what to have in mind, how to flow a conversation, where I was going with what I wanted to say and make it clear. Hold on a second, but is it all about just practicing and doing it anyway, even if it doesn't feel comfortable and one day it will happen? I wanted to pause here because when recording videos, at the beginning, it feels like you are talking to a camera, but there's something that changes once you actually go through the barrier of actually publishing the videos and this is gonna happen and it's gonna change the way you see recording videos and put them on YouTube. And it also, I think what I needed, what I needed was was just few comments that said thank you you helped me you have given me the confidence or you've made me do things in dance in the ways that you nobody else has ever done but the cool thing is you don't have to wait for messages to arrive to be confident on camera there is a trick that you can apply before you publish even your first video and this has got to do with imagining your audience. Already know who you will be talking to, what their struggles are gonna be, and then being aware and open to change this audience if they reveal it to you. Like has happened to Alessia. It gave me confidence. You're just jumping ahead to my second oh, question. Oh, I'm sorry. Which was related to <laughs> your audience. You now have more than 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, but at the beginning, like everyone else, you had zero. zero. I've always been curious, like, how do you go about making videos for somebody you have no idea who's going to watch? You don't have an avatar in mind. You might have it, but you're not sure of it. When you started, how did you even start? Like, who did you think about when you're doing your videos? So at first, at first, the idea I had behind the channel, I think I went with what was comfortable, all right? What I knew, what I knew about the skills that I had, the career I had, the very basics. So I didn't really dig much deeper, but I said, I'm sure people kind of know how to sew point shoes or what exercises to do. You know, I know them. I'm sure everyone else knows them. But I said, okay, I'll start with something comfortable, uh, something that made me feel okay, that was confident, knowing what I was talking about. And I decided to say, if you were younger, if you were 15 again, and you started your career and you don't know what to expect from uh, auditions, you don't know what to expect in the ballet world when you go to school, if you don't know what to expect when you're getting to your first job in company, I always thought it would have been nice to have have a ballerina at hand where I could ask her questions and get some guidance get some guidance from and speaking of guidance this youtube channel is all about helping you grow your youtube channel for your business and if you want to avoid the seven unforgivable youtube mistakes feel free to download my guide it's free and the link is in the description box below and so i said okay i'm gonna do i'm gonna do these videos for my younger self for the girl that was looking for books and uh video cassettes that's how old we are video cassettes they'll Beautiful. cost I know things <laughs> that cost lots of money because I had to save to buy one video cassette that was about a hundred bucks to get and I couldn't really afford it. So I had to save money. We didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have, I just had books and I had to find out a lot. I want to take away, in a way, that struggle 
for my younger self. And I started creating videos for the young students that I was back then and kind of gifting myself, my younger self of my knowledge now. So it's almost like I kind of went back in time and started talking to her. And did you find that people that reacted to your videos were kind of like your younger self? They were like my, my, my younger self, but at my age. So anyone that came around was adult dancers. They wanted to do ballet. They never maybe had the possibility to do it. Maybe it's something that they uh, put in the drawer and left it there and never went back to it, but always wanted to. There was a little a passion. So it was interesting to see how the way you talk, the way you approach a discipline, the way you approach whatever you do attracts different people. As I said, I thought I was talking to my younger self, but obviously I wasn't. I wasn't the kind, I'm Meaning not the kind of- younger group. dancers wanted to do the career kind of Correct. younger self. Correct. It's okay to start with an idea and sort of pivot halfway through then. I think it needs to pivot. I think at first you don't really know what you're doing, so you're testing waters. You're trying, as I said, you go through what is comfortable, what you know. It's more or less like what we're doing now. We're testing waters. We see how, how it works. It is like the first episode that we do, <laughs> and we don't really know how to kind of work with each other in front of the camera. We are both usually I'm in front of the camera and you're behind <laughs> yeah. the camera like or this. vice versa. So it's testing waters and, and then pivoting to see where the audience comes from. And also what I've noticed is very interesting because a channel changes with you. It's almost, if I look at, if I look at the Laysan's Tips channel, when we started it, it really has all the insecurities that bo <laughs> we both has. Yeah. It has all the struggles of putting together videos. We didn't really know who we were talking to. We didn't really know what we were doing. So it was just testing waters and kind of going further and further. The confidence that I had on camera, it was non-existent at the beginning. It's almost like I was trying to hide myself from the camera. It was the most interesting thing. When did you start gaining some of the confidence? What was the thing that made you think, oh, maybe, Maybe I'm, I'm good. Knowing that I had an audience on the other side, even if it was five people, it was few people that just replied and said, you helped me, you changed my life. It made this exercise is made me happy. Whatever you're doing is making me much more confident. Knowing that I was helping five, 10, 15, 20 people at the same time. And then they started growing and growing and growing. That's how I said, okay, I've got responsibility. I've got a responsibility now. I've got a responsibility towards the people that are on the other side that they're waiting for me. They are relying on me for the content that comes out, for what I give them and for a glimpse of happiness that they're receiving. So I that's think, how. I think that's also why you gain so much traction. It's not because you had an agenda with this channel. <laughs> we wanted to make <laughs> it like a, a mainstream of income, <laughs> but because we didn't know how to go about it, we just started serving people, right? And Correct. that was your whole mission. Confidence on camera can be learned by switching from, oh my God, how am I gonna be judged? Or how do I look? How do I sound into, how can I help this audience that I'm envisioning that I want to serve and I want to help? But this is not enough because the routine of creating videos might burn you out. And if you don't have an enough why you're doing what you're doing, you are not going to last long. And for this reason, I want to share with you the story of how we did it, how we monetize our channel ethically and having so much more reward from our audience that are willing to pay for other products outside YouTube. And if you're thinking of quitting on YouTube, that for me is a big disaster. So I want to share our story and this is the video I want you to watch right now to change your mind if you are on the verge of quitting as a creator on YouTube. Jack, blah, 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 blah. Not sure where we're going with this. I love you. La, la, la. Don't ledger it.